Good day, everyone. As you can see, this is a no frills podcast today. Um, in light of everything that's gone on this week with uh, Bell and the 1300 jobs that were lost uh, on the media side, uh, just wanted to um, share some of my experience with the company and uh, also provide maybe a call to action, if you will, for local communities and the government as well. Um, so Let's start with the fact that, uh, full disclosure, I was a host on TSN 690 and previous to that Team 990, and I loved it. And I was um, dropped in September after 19 years of uh, working with them and, and the last several years after Bell acquired the Chum radio stations. I was always part-time. I was never a full-time employee. Uh, my show was funded by uh, my own advertisements uh, that I would uh, pr procure, my own sponsors. And uh, I lost my show due to um, a, a snarky comment I put out on Twitter. And um, and obviously, I, I, I paid the price for it. Um, I've apologized. Uh, I've tried to make amends. I've tried to be a lot more positive in general. And I've learned from my mistakes, no question about that. So that's the full disclosure. I just wanted to throw that out before I prefaced everything here. Now, Bell Media itself is an entity that is part of, you know, BCE and in, Incorporated, and it's a public, uh, pub publicly traded company. Now, when that happens, the emphasis is on uh, dividends for the shareholders and the stock price, and. Boy, oh boy, um, are we seeing that year after year, cuts, 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 and everything is blamed on the general landscape of media. But there's more to it. And when you look at how things have transpired in the last several years, and you know, I'm talking about Bell because that's my personal experience, but it certainly applies to Rogers. I don't want to single out Bell uh, at all. Uh, Rogers and Bell are the, are the big two behemoths here in in Canada. Obviously, you have Chorus as well, but not at the you know the level of Rogers and Bell who go at it constantly. But um, you're looking at a lot of people who lost their jobs this week, and we understand that the media landscape changes. That reportedly, you know, media revenue is down, but. There's also the fact that when you're a publicly traded company, you don't own, only answer to the owners, you answer to the shareholders. And there's additional pressure constantly, constantly, constantly on where to cut corners, on how to save money, on how to make money. And it's really, really um, the driver of everything. It's no longer about the news content. It's no longer about the services provided in the community and, and things of that nature. You know, I remember being in a meeting several years ago uh, at the radio station and an executive who's no longer with Bell uh, came in and sat everyone down and he was dead serious, like dead serious. And I can't remember the incident that led us all to have this chat. It was something, somebody said something on air um, and it was controversial, I guess. And this executive, high up executive, looked everybody in the eye and said, you do anything to affect the stock price, you're gone. And that was it. Then, right then and there, I knew that it was no longer about the entertainment, the fun, the ability to provide strong content to the listeners or, or the listener experience for that matter. It was about how can we squeeze every single cent out of this corporation. And you see it here locally in Montreal, it's no longer CJD news, right? When you hear the news uh, cast, it's CTV Montreal news, even though that's the TV side. Everything is becoming homogenized. Everything is becoming uh, generic, if you will, the opposite of local, right? You're seeing less weekend shows of prominence on talk radio. You're seeing more national talk shows to take daytime hours away from local programming. And it's really unfortunate because we're losing a bit of our soul in this country. And it's not 
unique to Canada, certainly. You, you see it in the, in the U.S. as well, to some extent. But this whole notion that we're going to give money to publicly traded companies in the media space to help save local news is literally insane. It is the opposite of what should be happening. You're, you're, you're talking about an entity that makes decisions at a corporate level. Look, here in Montreal, there's, there's wonderful people who run radio stations here in, in Montreal for Bell. Wonderful people. But they're juggling three, four hats because they're being asked to. And no longer do you have that, that amazing, you know, local grizzled veteran whose only job is to provide amazing coverage or content to listeners. Now it's how the hell do I keep my head above water? How do I manage two or three different departments when I really should only be managing one? Meanwhile, Bell puts their hand out to get subsidies to help local news. And the government just says, okay, you have the biggest footprint in the country. Here you go. Here you go. We'll help to subsidize smaller little newspapers across the country to some extent. But here you go, Bell. Here you go, Rogers. Here you go. Here's some, here's some, here's some subsidies. Uh, and then you turn around and you and you lay off as many people as you do. And it's just, you know, saddening. And, you know, I hope that this is a, a, a movement that a movement begins to help support local vets, local uh, local veteran journalists who've perhaps been laid off. I'm not talking about myself in any way. I'm talking about people who've been, you know, serious broadcast journalists for 10, 15 years, reporters in local communities, and let them start something on their own to go to be entrenched in the community and cover there. Because everything is becoming, how can we save money? How can we cut corners? And how can we still claim that we're local? I, it's becoming a sham. And it's really, really sad. And the answer isn't to give more money, the government to give more money to these corporations to up their you know, ability to provide local. That's never going to happen. Their, aunt, their bosses are the shareholders. That's it. That's it. So that money doesn't matter what the public spin is. And believe me, I've been in PR and marketing for my whole career. It's not going to go far. When you see uh, digital creators uh, employed now at half the price of old reporters at these various, you know where things are going. So what we should be doing is we should be encouraging small startups or longtime experienced, well-respected journalists, real, absolute, honest to God journalists and giving them the ability, the subsidy, the opportunity, the platform, the education in some respects to say, you know what? I don't need to be, be employed by a company that's not based here, that is cutting corners year after year after year after year. I can do things myself. I can go into the community. I can, I can attend events. I can receive email uh, notices from various associations and communities uh, within my region, and I can report on things, and I can develop my own podcast, and I can develop my own website or app or whatever the case may be. This is what the movement should be. This is this is what the wake up call should be when we hear thirteen hundred jobs and radio stations shut down across the country. And I just wanted to to maybe shed a little light on where, where the attention should be put on. Because it's not, you know, everybody goes, oh, you know, this sucks. But then they go right back to consuming the same media, right? Because they have no other choice or because they're not looking hard enough in the community. There are other outlets. There are smaller, budding, amazing people doing amazing things in the community. And I just hope that when we see this type of backlash from the big guys, that it, it spurs the government, it spurs well-to-do benefactors to go and you, you want a democracy? You want a democracy? It's not one or two or three companies owning every media in the country. It's sprouting up small entities across the country 
to really fill that void, fill that hole, let people feel proud of, of where they live again. Let them hear local angles and local stories again, because you're not going to get what you had 10, 20 years ago anymore from these large stations. Uh, you're not, you're not, it's not in their best interests. It's just not, uh, not only that, but uh, perhaps, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'll give you a quick anecdote, you know, uh, as big as these corporations are, you know, they're not quick to uh, sometimes adapt to, to where money can be made. You know, I've seen it firsthand with the inability of, you know, um, uh, Bell, for example, to monetize podcasts or segments put online. I've seen it firsthand. I've experienced it firsthand. Quality content out there. They're not sharing it properly. They're not advertising pre-rolls or using that content to make money. Uh, instead, they throw their hands up in the air and say, well, media and revenue's down, so we're going to have to cut some jobs. No, you just have to be more creative. I've seen sales departments throw their hands up in the air because, oh, that's too small of a deal for us. I'm not going to handle that. It's too small of a deal. Well, guess who it's not too small for? Some little guy out there, some budding little uh, journal you know, outlet run by very, very competent people who would love to take that money and they could run further with it than perhaps a large entity who thumbs their nose at that small amount of money. So my, my, my passionate plea is for people out there who either have means, have influence, or government officials listening to, to shut that spigot off with subsidies or anything for large corporations and start to invest again in small newspapers, for lack of a better term at this point in 2023, small um, you know, entities that are looking to grow their footprint and cover the communities in a very competent and passionate way that the large ones don't. Everything is quick, 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 efficiency, efficiency, move on. What's the stock price? What's the stock price? This has to stop. This has to stop. You lose your democracy. You lose your democracy when you have this kind of management and, and quote unquote, hashtag save local news. It's not going to be saved by the big guys. Absolutely not. The only way it's going to be saved by is, is, you know, independent integrity type of places uh, in, that are entrenched in various communities. That is how you save democracy. It's not condoning or supporting or even listening or watching sometimes these larger media outlets. So, you know, I've, I've shared my piece. I hope that resonates with some people. Um, if you like what you heard, I'll do more of this stuff as opposed to just sports. Um, thanks for listening.